What is up everyone, the brand new Pokemon TCG set, Sword and Shield Lost Origin has just arrived and there are some really cool cards to look at for this set. Today I'm going to show you my top 10 from the set, the 5 most beautiful and collectible cards, and the 5 most playable cards and the cards that will have the most impact on the standard format of the Pokemon TCG. So let's go ahead and get started. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more Pokemon TCG content, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit that like button, and leave me a comment down below letting me know your thoughts on Lost Origin. Personally, I really like this set. I think it's really cool that they brought back the Lost Zone factor and that we get to see that cool effect on some of the cards, that cool art style with these smoke lines kind of of the teal and pink and purple on a lot of cards that have um, an effect with the Lost Zone. So this is a pretty cool set. I think Pokemon did a really good job on it. I think it's going to be a pretty pricey set in terms of buying cards in real life. Um, a lot of these cards are probably going to be kind of expensive, but there's going to be some neat decks. I think we'll still see a lot of decks from the past two sets, uh, past two, past three sets stick around like Mew VMAX and RCS V-Star, Palkia V-Star. We're going to see those guys stick around. I don't think there's going to be a lot that's going to bring down those decks, but a lot of cards I will add to that. Uh, the trainer cards in the set, Nothing too spectacular, nothing out of this world, but the Pokemon are something else. So let's get started with the five cards that I think are the most stunning. Uh, there are some really good ones. I think the Trainer Gallery is the best Trainer Gallery we've seen in the three sets we've gotten uh, in, with the Trainer Gallery in the Sword and Shield series. We had it in Brilliant Stars and in Astro Radiance. We got it again in Lost Origin. And I think Pokemon has done the best job with the Trainer Gallery in Lost Origin. So let's look at those five most beautiful cards. So speaking of the Trainer Gallery, I have three cards from that in here. So... This one is probably my favorite card in the set. Eternatus VMAX Training Gallery. I mean, if this isn't the coolest card you've ever seen, I don't know what is. Look at this. I mean, Eternatus has had some nice VMAX and V cards in the past, but with Rose right there and big old Eternatus in the background, the art on this is just perfect and stunning. It looks really good. Now, this card brings up an interesting thing though. Um, it's you can see in the bottom left corner it has that D on there. So rotation is coming up very soon for the Pokemon TCG and the way rotation works now is all cards with that D in the bottom left corner will no longer be legal for the standard format. And it's coming up very soon, very soon after Lost Origin is released. And so it's kind of interesting to me that they're doing cards like we've got Pikachu VMAX in the Trainer Gallery, Cinescorch VMAX in the Trainer Gallery, Eternatus, and those cards are all going to rotate out the standard format. So personally, I think it'd be kind of disappointing, you know, if you opened up a pack, pulled this really cool looking Eternatus VMAX Trainer Gallery card, and then you couldn't play it in your favorite Pokemon TCG deck if you were playing the standard format. So I think that's kind of interesting that Pokemon did that, but I mean, I think the art makes up for it, honestly, on this Eternatus VMAX card. This is definitely going to be my chase card for the set. Hopefully I can pull this one, um, but in the meantime, I'll just stare at it online. So I turn it this VMAX is just one of the many beautiful cards. We got Pikachu VMAX, another awesome looking Trainer Gallery VMAX card. So this one, kind of hard to see, but you can see that Red and Pikachu are in a stadium ready to dish out some battle moves. Pikachu VMAX, the big old Chonkachu in the background. Looks like he's actually coming down with that GMAX Volt Crash. Uh, I think this is going to be a big chase card along with the Pikachu V Trainer Gallery just because it's Pikachu. Everybody loves Pikachu. He's the face of Pokemon. And then if you watch the Pokemon anime series, uh, it, you know, you know, Ash, um, this isn't Ash, this is Red, but it's about the closest we get to Ash in the Pokemon training card game. And it's just a really iconic looking card, you know, I think a lot of people are going to be looking for this one. But again, it has that D in the bottom left corner, so going to be rotating, it, rotating out very soon, which is unfortunate because I would love to build some of these VMAX decks using these trainer gallery cards in real life. That would just look so cool on the battlefield. And then we have Cinescorch VMAX, and that's a really nice looking one. So this has an art style that I really like when you pull it in real life. It looks very nice when you have that texture on there. And it's just a full card with this awesome looking art. You can see Kabu is walking on Cinescorch. And so Cinescorch, uh, it was very playable for a while. And I don't think it's as playable now. 
it is going to rotate rotate out very soon you can see it has that d in the bottom left corner but it's definitely going to look nice in your collection this is a really nice looking card so those are my favorite those are just three of the top five we'll get to the other two but those were the three uh trainer gallery v max cards that i thought looked really good the three that stuck out to me let me know which one is your favorite or if there's another trainer gallery card you're looking for so for the other two very beautiful cards we're gonna look at some all arts aerodactyl v going back to the prehistoric pokemon age aerodactyl v alternate art is a really cool looking one again really nice art style on this one you know, uh, Jura uh, Jurassic period, Jurassic world vibes going on right here with Aerodactyl and some other fossil Pokemon walking around. A really cool looking card. This one looks really nice in real life. Um, I don't think, I would say if I had to rank these cards in order of the looks, um, Aerodactyl would probably be number 5, but it's nonetheless a very good card. Only downside to this one is you, it's not very playable. Uh, some people are looking to put together Aerodactyl V-Star deck, I think that's, um, and that that's, has some potential, but as far as the V-Card, nothing special as far as the attacks and HP and other playable card, playable parts of the card go, but a very nice looking alt art to add to your collection. And then, of course, Giratina V alt art. Uh, probably people are going to look for those Pikachu Trainer Gallery cards, but as far as cards that will be legal for the standard format, Garatina V Alt Art. Whoever drew this, uh, it must have taken him quite a while to do so because look how much detail is on this card. Um, I can only imagine what this looks like in real life. I have not seen any videos of anyone pulling it, but it has to be incredible. I mean, it's just incredible online. You know, it's almost hard to pick out Giratina in the middle of this card because there's just so much going on. But imagine this in real life with that texture on it and just pulling that out of a pack would be so awesome. I'm sure this will be a very, very expensive card. So you might want to try your luck at pulling it rather than buying it raw. Now let's talk about the playable part of the Pokemon TCG and the cards that I think will have an impact on the current standard format and metagame. So starting with some budget deck um, options here, I'll have a video coming in the future where I'll break down a few of the budget deck uh, options from Lost Origin, but today I just want to highlight a few of the main cards, a couple of them. Machamp. So this is a pretty neat one. It's a stage two, so you know, probably want to use rare candy here to go straight from the uh oh man machop yeah i was having a uh i couldn't remember here for a second machop straight to machamp using rare candy and he's got 150 hp but the ability crisis muscle says if your opponent has three or fewer prize cards remaining this pokemon gets 150 plus hp Let's look at that Pikachu VMAX again. This is a Pokemon VMAX that gives up three prize cards when your opponent knocks it out. And he's got 310. If your opponent has three or fewer prize cards remaining, Machamp is basically a Pokemon VMAX that gives up one prize card, which is pretty incredible. And the attack is very nice as well. Strong Arm Lariat for two fighting energy does 100 damage plus another 100, uh, which you may choose to do. But if you do, during your next turn, this Pokemon can't attack. We've seen an effect like this with Sashi and V before with Brave Flame. This is out 230 and you can't attack with it during your next turn, but there is a little bit of a cheat. For some reason, if you switch the Pokemon to the bench and then bring it back up using retreat cards or switch cards, um, then you can use the attack again. So Machamp only has two minutes retreat costs. Uh, so there's probably some cards out there. Uh, I, know, I know there's several Pokemon of abilities, maybe some trainer cards. You could get Machamp free retreat, you know, before it rotates out, obviously air balloon, bring Machamp down to the bench, bring him back up again, hit with strong arm lariat for another 200 damage. And I mean, Machamp is very easily um, a two hit single prize Pokemon, which is pretty insane. But yep, that's the way it works, Machamp. I think this is going to be a fun one to hopefully build as a single prize deck. Uh, I think it would really work out and it would probably be a lot of fun to play. Uh, Sui and Sorark, not as much of a clear strategy as Machamp, but it's a still pretty cool looking card. It's stage one, makes it a little easier to bring into play. 120 HP, and it's a Hazuian Pokemon, so as you can see, we have an attack that requires no energy, Doom Curse. At the end of your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon will be knocked out. 
Uh, yeah, so no energy and the potential to just straight up knock out your opponent's Pokemon. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, obviously, if you if your opponent uh, retreats or switches or does something to get their Pokemon out of the active position, it will not be knocked out because this uh, targets the Pokemon that is in the position when you use the attack. And so if that Pokemon leaves the active position, then uh, it will not be knocked out. But if you can find a way to trap your opponent in the active position, you know, maybe put some cards into play that make them not want to bring their Pokemon down to the bench, something like Spike Most Stadium card, or, you know, there's even some Pokemon with abilities that force your opponent um, to not be able to retreat. So Doom Curse could potentially bring that damage down without uh, using any energy. It's a very interesting attack. Uh, no energy required, which could make Kazooie and Zorak a pretty big threat. Call back for one Psychic Energy puts a card from your discard pile into your hand. Uh, not that great of an attack, and you really want to focus on Doom Curse, so I'll look into this card a bit more, and maybe I'll bring you guys a deck list in my Lost Origin Budget decks video. Now, uh, the Radiant Pokemon are making a return. We got three new Radiant Pokemon in the set. My favorite is Radiant Steelix. So I saw this Pokemon, I didn't see an ability, I'm like, that's interesting. Uh, I was like, no uh, ability, I don't really see any value to Radiant Steelix, but then I saw the attack Destructive Finish. Two metal energy, one colorless, 60 base damage, and it says, discard cards from the top of your deck until only one card remains. This attack does 30 more damage for each energy card you discarded in this way. Imagine if you had a deck with 59 energy and one Radiant Steelix. That would be a lot of damage because you'd be forced to start with Radiant Steelix because he's the only Pokemon in your deck and you have to find a Pokemon and so you draw him at some point after a bunch of mulligans probably. So you'd start him and if you could get that energy onto him then you could use Destructive Finish and boom that would just be tons of damage. Uh, that would be pretty fun to see. I might try and make a video where I can see if I can pull that off and dish out like over a thousand damage with Radiant Steelix. I'm sure it's uh, not actually as hard as you would think, but Destructive Finish, a really interesting attack, and you'll notice it says you discard cards until only one card remains. So that means uh, it's not discarding every single card in your deck, which means that you'll have another turn that you can survive for uh, without decking out, assuming your opponent doesn't discard any cards off the top of your deck or anything. So that means you have another turn where you could potentially use something like Volcarona V. Now, Radiant Steelix does damage by discarding energy. Volcarona V does damage by bringing energy back into the deck. Obviously, you discard a lot of energy with Radiant Steelix, and you bring back a lot of energy with Volcarona V. I think those two could pair together for some serious damage and a really fun deck. Uh, obviously, Radiant Steelix is a Radiant Pokemon. You can't have more than one in your deck. So, if he's into prize cards, then you might want a and Heavy Ball to grab him out of there. But I think Volcarona V, Radiant Steelix, I'll see if I can put it together. If I do, I'll definitely make a video on it. Then we have Azumi and Sorog V-Star, which is a pretty cool V-Star Pokemon, 270 HP. Ticking Curse does 50 damage for each of your Pokemon that has any damage counters on it. Obviously, the maximum amount of Pokemon you can have in play is 6. If each of those Pokemon has a damage counter on it, then you could hit for 300 damage for 2 colorless energy, which is pretty good. You know, you could easily power that up with double turbo energy, so... I don't know, Zubi and Zorak V-Star might be a good card to build a fun deck around. Phantom Star is the V-Star power ability. During your turn, you may discard your hand and draw 7 cards. Basically an extra professor's research. So, Zubi and Zorak and V-Star, um, a pretty cool card, maybe a good deck, maybe have an impact on the metagame, only time will tell. Finally, Giratina V-Star, 280 HP, it's a dragon type Pokemon, you'll see he's got those swirls and that smoke that I mentioned earlier. That means Giratina V-Star is going to play around the Lost Zone for his strategy. Lost Impact costs 1 Grass, 1 Psychic, and 1 Colorless, does 280 damage. I mean, looking at Giratina V-Star's HP, that's enough to knock out some Pokemon V-Star in one hit. And it says, put 2 energy attached to your Pokemon in the Lost Zone. So. Uh, obviously, you could take it off of Giratina, or you could take it off of your bench Pokemon. It's up to you. Um, Lost Impact can dish out some serious damage, and if you can get that energy right back on there, then 
hey, I mean, you could keep dishing out the big damage and taking out this Pokemon V-Star in one hit. Something that is not very easy to do. Star Requiem is, uh, I don't know if I said that right, uh, it's kind of a weird word, but anyway, it costs one Grass Energy and one Psychic Energy. It's the V-Star Power, and you can use this attack only if you have 10 or more cards in the Lost Zone. If you do have 10 or more cards in the Lost Zone, your opponent's active Pokemon is knocked out. Don't know what it is with Lost Origin and knocking out our opponent's Pokemon in one hit, but the Pokemon in the set sure like to do that. Hazui and Zora can guarantee the V-Star. So you can see the synergy between the V-Star power and the Lost Impact attack. Put that energy in the discard pile, use the V-Star power, take a big knockout on your opponent's Pokemon V-Star or V-Max, grab some prize cards off of that. Very useful V-Star power and while getting 10 cards in the Lost Zone may seem kind of extreme, it's actually very possible. You know, we could just get that uh, energy in the discard pile, or not the discard pile, the Lost Zone through Lost Impact. And there's plenty of other Lost Zone feature cards in the set. So getting 10 cards in the Lost Zone, actually pretty easy if you play the right deck. And you can just knock out your opponent's active Pokemon in one hit. Giratina V-Star, pretty cool card and a pretty powerful one too. Hopefully we see it pop up in the metagame. I think it'll be really neat to see. That's it for my top 10 cards in the set overview of Lost Origin. If you enjoyed, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, drop a comment down below, leave a like, and uh, stay tuned to the channel for more Lost Origin content. I should be making some deck profiles soon and going over some budget decks and maybe opening up some packs. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, everyone.